Good morning. Welcome to St. John Lutheran Church and Christian Preschool. I am so glad that we could worship together this morning in person, on the radio, and on the internet. We want to say thank you so much uh, to uh, Wartburg College Commerce Striker for being here with us today, uh, Dr. Rebecca Niederheiser, uh, their conductor. We are so grateful that uh, you included us on your European tour. So <laughs> it is like a whole nother country up here. I say that as someone who has lived in Charles City and Waverly, uh, but, but we're all rooting for the Iowa uh, women today, right? Yeah, all right, wherever we're from. Thank you so much for your music and for your gifts today. We appreciate it. Thank you also to Norma Overly for providing our altar flowers today in memory of Calvin Overly. And also thank you to Paul and Yolanda Van Osdal for sponsoring our broad radio broadcast on KCHA today in celebration of their anniversary. Happy anniversary, Paul and Yolanda. Uh, and also thank you to uh, Carolyn Marth and family for providing uh, the treats for social time after the service. We invite you to come down to the parish hall and uh, have some social time and treats with us if you can do that. I'd like to invite Whitney Frankie to come up now. Uh, she's the director of our St. John Christian Preschool. Good morning. Good morning. I brought a script so I don't ramble. <laughs> First of all, this morning I heard bells at 8.30 and I about had a heart attack that I was going to be late. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to quick uh, talk to you all about our, the preschool's all-school fundraiser. Um, our students usually have two tuition reduction fundraisers, but this fundraiser directly benefits the preschool. Um, our goal is to raise at least $2,000, and we are hoping to purchase a lot of new things, um, including library shelving. We have a lot of books. We read a lot. Um, and so our books are getting really cramped, so that's one thing big for the preschool. But we also would like to add and update some new um, dramatic play equipment, uh, more loved toys and manipulatives, and possibly some more outdoor equipment as well. So what we're doing this year is we are doing a cash calendar. So it's kind of like the 100 envelope challenge. What you will do, here's our calendar. I have some hanging up on the little kiosk in the back. All of our preschoolers have one as well, so if you know a preschool family, you're more than welcome to contact them. You will sponsor a day on the calendar, so if you choose the 10th, you'll pay $10. Or if you want a couple days, you'll pay whatever that e equals, okay? Each calendar is worth $465. Um, and so all of the, all of the cash, uh, it could be cash checks, um, or if you're the digital type, you can Venmo or PayPal somebody as well. Um, so at the end of our uh, fundraiser, which is April 19th, we'll have everything uh, turned in. And we have something a little different this year, a little incentive for both sellers and sponsors. If, you are, um, if we meet our goal of $2,000, which would be the equivalent of five full calendars, um, our, all of our preschoolers will get a snow cone party at the end of the year, and the sponsors, however many times you put your name on the calendar, your name will be put into the hat, um, and we're going to do a drawing for two $50 Quick Star cards. So that's our fundraiser in a nutshell. It's the cash calendar. I have some in the back if you'd like to sign up, or if you have any questions, you may reach out to myself um, or Carleen. Um, and it runs from, well, we started on April 1st, and it'll run through April 19th. So cash calendar, you pay the day you sponsor, um, and I think that's it. What if somebody wants to sponsor the 125th of April? We'll take it. You'll take it. <laughs> that's what I thought. All right, great. Thank you, Thank Whitney. You. <laughs> Appreciate it. And now I'd like to invite uh, Kim Watkins, our council president, with, uh, she's got a special announcement. All right, we have a couple of spots left on the mission trip that's happening on June 16th through the 22nd. It's available for all 7th through 12th graders. Um, I've extended the deadline until April 10th, which is this Wednesday, so hopefully we can hear back before confirmation. Um, if you have any questions, whether what we're doing, when we're going to be back, um, fundraisers, if you can't afford the trip, we do have a couple people who have said they would sponsor a child if they want to go, if that's an issue. So just see me after church. 
Um, the next thing we have on the list is Ladies' Luncheon, which is happening next Sunday at 11.30. Um, call the office to make your reservations just so I can make sure I have enough food for everyone by April 11th. On the menu, it's going to be a salad, baked pasta, and your host for the table is going to make a special dessert just for you. And I know there's a couple ladies over here who have a competition of who's going to have the best dessert. <laughs> um, we're going to have a devotional, trivia, and the trivia is all going to be woman questions, just to give you a heads up so if you want to study before it. Um, we're also going to be planting succulents um, afterwards. This is a free will donation, so just make a reservation and come and eat and have some fun. All right, great. Thank you. I'm trying to figure out what women questions are, but I'm a man, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't know. So, all right. Well, this is the second Sunday of Easter. We are continuing to celebrate the resurrection in this Easter season. Tomorrow is the day of the solar eclipse. Uh, and uh, so that's the day when the moon photobombs us, <laughs> comes between us and the sun and says, just passing through. And uh, the sun gets to take a break for just a little bit tomorrow. I actually have family headed to Texas right now to see the total eclipse. That, I don't know why. They're going down to Texas just to see that. And I asked them, what are you guys going to eat? They said, light snacks, <laughs> maybe sun chips. <laughs> That's my family. <laughs> But, you know, Jesus said in John chapter 8, I am the light of the world, and that is the light that we're concerned about today. So I invite you to stand as we make our confession and hear God's forgiveness. He proved it. Jesus proved it on Easter that he is the light of the world. So we begin this service in the name of our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God. We confess, we confess that, that we, we are captive, captive to sin and, and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We sing our gathering song number 382, Christ is Risen, Alleluia.
got a great crop of Easter drawings from our children on Easter last Sunday. Uh, the first one is from one of our older children, Carol <laughs> Braun, <laughs> who drew the empty tomb and Pastor Russ and his dad and uncle jumping over hills in a van saying, it was epic. <laughs> It was epic Easter. Thank you, Carol. And Grace uh, says, he is risen. And there's a response to that congregation. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And she drew the empty tomb. Cash is done with the Easter tiger. He's moved on to the Easter leopard. <laughs> I tried to erase some of those spots and they wouldn't come off. You got to think about that one. Leopards don't change their spots. Okay. <laughs> Finley drew the Holy Trinity. She's got the Father, Jesus, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and me trying to work my Easter ribbon. <laughs> Drake drew Jesus, Alleluia, the empty crosses and two hearts because we all love Jesus for what he did. Brinley couldn't stop with two hearts. She drew 21 hearts and 21 stars. Maybe she was thinking about the lucky charm she had for <laughs> breakfast that morning, but I think it's because Jesus' love is the star of Easter. And that's why we're here this Easter season. And we begin remembering that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit is with you all. And also with you. Pray together the prayer of the day. Almighty God, God with joy we, we celebrate, celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. resurrection. By, By the, the grace of Christ, Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And you may be seated.
Our scripture reading this morning is from Acts 4, verses 32 through 35. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold, they laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Here ends the reading. I'd like to invite the kids to come up for the children's sermon, and as they come, let's sing Jesus Loves Me. Come on up, kids. How are you guys? You sound a little sleepy today. Yeah, are you a little bit sleepy? No? Okay, all right, good, good. I'm glad I'm wrong. So have you ever missed out on anything? Missed out on something like, I remember last year during vacation Bible school, I ended up getting sick and had to miss a lot of it, and that really made me bummed. Have you guys ever missed out on anything? What have you missed out on? Wait. The uh, parade was on. I was sick. Oh, you missed the parade. So one time when we were going to church, I was sick and uh-huh. had to stay home. Oh, you missed out on church. That's too bad. That's something that I'm going to miss pretty soon. Yeah. I'm going to miss a soccer game because I have to go somewhere pretty oh. soon. Okay. So that's a bummer to miss the soccer game. Anybody else miss out on something? Going camping. Oh, you're going to miss out on that, huh? Bummer. My, mother, my mother-in-law would have loved missing out on camping. <laughs> but you're not. I can tell by the look on your face. So how does it feel to miss out on something? Bad. Not good, right? It makes us sad or maybe grumpy or unhappy. Well, in our gospel reading today, Thomas misses out on something, and that's how he felt too. See, he missed out because on the day that Jesus rose from the dead, that night, he went to visit his friends, and he went to visit his friends, and he said, Aloha! Yep, that's what he said. He went to visit his friends, and he told them, Aloha! Sure. (sighs) Yep, got my Hawaiian shirt that I bought in high school. It almost fits. (laughs) And a Hawaiian lei. So Jesus went to visit his friends and he said, Aloha. Well, not exactly Aloha. You see, he went to visit them and he walked in and he said, Peace. And aloha has a lot of different meanings, but one of them is peace. He walked in and he said, peace, which is aloha in Hawaiian. But you know who wasn't there? Thomas. His friend Thomas wasn't there. And when Thomas found out, he was really bummed that he missed out. But Jesus didn't want him to miss out. And so a week later, Jesus came back and he said, right, he said, Right, which means peace, right. 
so that Thomas got to see him too, so that he wouldn't miss out. See, that's the thing. Then Jesus sent them out to share his aloha or his peace with everyone because he doesn't want anybody to miss out. Now imagine if you had to miss out on church today, if you weren't here, and then you found out that during church, Jesus said aloha. And the pastor played Hawaiian music and put on a Hawaiian shirt and a Hawaiian lei, and then he passed out Hawaiian lace to all of the kids. And you weren't there. How would you feel? Sad, Sad right? Because you missed out. But Jesus doesn't want anybody to miss out. So here's what we're going to do. As soon as we're done praying, you're going to come see our acolytes over here, and they're going to give all of you two Hawaiian lays. Okay, one of them is for you to wear, and the other one I want you to give to somebody who's not here, okay? Somebody who's not here, and when you give it to them, say, aloha, that means peace, okay? Now, everybody, let's bow our heads, fold our hands, and repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus help me to share your aloha. Help me to share your aloha. So nobody misses out. So no one nobody misses, misses out. out. Amen. Amen. All right. Thanks for coming up. Go get your Hawaiian lays. It's tempting to do the rest of the service in this. <laughs> Don't forget the light. <laughs> and let's stand for the gospel song. <laughs> Gospel according to John, the twentieth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. And the Father, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And you may be seated. <clears throat> Spring is here. And I'm looking forward to doing some canoeing with my wife. 
We've been canoeing together for a long, long time. We have our system down. We each know our jobs, getting the canoe on and off the car. We know how to help each other get safely in and out of the canoe. And we know our jobs on the water. Mine is to paddle and steer. Hers is to paddle when she wants to. <laughs> and trust me, but she does very well. We've experienced some choppy water over the years, but we've never tipped over, not once. Now, I'm thinking about canoeing today because the very first time we ever canoed together was on a lake in Norway in 1985 while on European tour with the Wartburg Band. Having Commerce Striker here today uh, made me think of that. So if you all would like to paddle on your European tour, we have some very nice white water just across the street, just right over there. But having you guys here today reminds me that the first time that we ever canoed together was on Wartburg Band Tour. As we got into that canoe with our friend Joycey in the middle, we had no idea that we'd still be canoeing together four decades later. And just the two of us, we ditched Joycey. <laughs> Nobody wants to be a third paddle. <laughs> but it didn't happen right away. It didn't happen right away. We were just friends on band tour. The proof is in Susan's scrapbook where there's a picture of us and she says, my friend Russ. <laughs> But there was always something between us. Sometimes a flagpole. <laughs> sometimes a table. Sometimes Joycey. <laughs> it would be another year or more before we went on our first date. <laughs> Those are candy cigarettes, by the way. Don't smoke, kids. And it would be many more months after that, before Stop the Presses, Susan Poppin to be bride. <laughs> and another six months more after that, we walked down the aisle. And then another 35 years and eight months before we became the well-oiled canoeing machine that we are today. Because relationships take time. We've been married for 51 years. 54 years. We're celebrating our 25th wedding anniversary this year. Friday the 13th turned out to be the luckiest day of my life. <laughs> I think what I love the most about Bruce is he's very kind. She's a good cook. Serene. <laughs> She's a very compassionate person. She is truly the person I always wanted to be. I love her. <laughs> she is. A, she is. The epitome of serenity. Oh, one surprise to me about marriage after all these years has been what a joy it is at this stage. I didn't know that it would be that wonderful again as it was, you know, before we had all these little screaming memes. Well, it's not easy. Well, and the biggest and if problem, anybody thinks that you're going to be on your honeymoon for 51 years, it's ridiculous. Sometime the tunnel's pretty long. Yeah, and dark. Well, it has been an enjoyable challenge <laughs> uh, because I've been introduced into a culture that I was just totally ignorant of. It was very hard for I know yeah. that. What but hurt I... so much? You. <laughs> I think I had to have been like in my 30s or early 40s. I just thought, this is it? This isn't, this isn't fun. Really, the only reason it worked uh, in those early years is we both loved the Lord, and we taught our children to love the Lord. Yeah. You're going to have ups and downs, and, but it's worth it. You cannot change someone to fit the mold you want them to be. I just respect his space, and he respect my space. Lo love him the way he is. Be sure to buy two tubes of toothpaste. <laughs> well, I will say, you are the love of my life. And I'm so grateful that we have stuck it out this long, and I see us together another 
gazillion or Google? Do you say Google now? She's my babe. <laughs> and I love you. And I love the fact that I'm going to have you by my side forever. I love him so much. I love being with him. How could you not kiss? Yeah. <laughs> So they didn't get here overnight because relationships take time. So does our relationship with Jesus. We see in Acts 4 that under the leadership of John and Peter, the early church was thriving. They were boldly proclaiming God's love through the death and resurrection of Jesus. They were working together as one. They were taking care of each other. No one among them was in need. They were a well-oiled Jesus machine, doing all the things that Jesus had taught John and Peter to do. But it took time to get there. We see in John 20, on the other hand, in our gospel reading, it's still Easter. Just that morning, the women found the empty tomb. John and Peter ran to see for themselves that he had risen just as he said he would do. But instead of going out to share this amazing news, they were hiding, hiding behind a locked door. Now, John in his gospel says that it was because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders, but I have to wonder, I can't help but wonder if they were also afraid of Jesus. I mean, they had all just abandoned him a few days earlier. That same night, Peter denied even knowing Jesus three times. And what had been Peter's last interaction with Jesus before this? After years of watching Jesus heal people and love them and feed them and take care of them, after years of listening to Jesus teach them nonviolence and say, love your enemies, what was Peter's last act in front of Jesus? He pulled out a sword and cut off someone's ear. They all had gotten things so wrong a few nights earlier. And I could understand why they'd be a little nervous about seeing Jesus. And so there they were, instead of taking care of people and proclaiming the resurrection, they were all hiding. Well, almost all of them, all except for Thomas, doubting Thomas, who totally gets a bad rap. I mean, he's the only one of the disciples that wasn't hiding. Who knows, maybe he was out actually doing what Jesus had said to do. But anyway, Jesus showed up in their hiding place and he said, Aloha, <laughs> peace. Go share my peace with others. One week later, they were still hiding in the locked room. They didn't rush out. It took time for their new relationship with Jesus to grow. But Jesus was patient. He came back again and again. He said, aloha, peace. Go share my peace with others. Do the things that you've seen me do. But they still didn't go. They still didn't go after he came two times. Relationships take time. It wasn't until the day of Pentecost they had their turning point. It wasn't until the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit literally pushed them out of that room that they began to proclaim the resurrection and to build the community that we see in Acts chapter 4 because relationships take time. So does our relationship with Jesus. Just as with the first disciples, Jesus doesn't give up on us either, even when we don't get it right away. Hey, thanks for helping me get this ready. My kids love Easter. <laughs> Who doesn't love Easter, am I right? Yeah, that's true. But if you think about it, leading up to that first Easter, Jesus had it pretty rough. Wow, I never really thought of that. <laughs> I wonder what ever happened to that guy. Well, you know, he, he died on the cross. Yeah. You sure about that? Yeah. No, no, that's a different guy. I'm thinking of the Jesus that, uh, what's his last name? No, 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 no. 
It's the same guy. Really? Yeah. Wow. I just never connected the two together before. Jesus on a cross. I wonder whatever happened to that guy. Uh, he, uh, he came back to life. Three days later. What? Yeah. Wait, we're still talking about Tomb Jesus. Yeah. That's the same guy? Yeah. yeah, he died on the cross for our sins. No, no, that's a different Jesus. No, 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 same one. Died on the cross, was buried in the tomb, came back to life, and now he sits at the right hand of God. Wait, cross Jesus is the same as right hand of God Jesus? Yeah. Not separate Jesuses? There's no separate Jesuses. I just never put them all together before. No, it's still, it's still one guy. Wait, you understand what this means, don't you? One guy did all of that? I mean, that changes history, that changes everything. That is big. <laughs> he deserves more than just jelly beans for his birthday. <laughs> Wait, so the Easter Bunny is the no. same? Maybe your relationship with Jesus is new and you have lots of questions. That's okay, questions are great. They lead to understanding. Find someone you trust and ask away. But maybe you don't have questions, but you're not where you wanna be with Jesus. Don't worry, he's very patient. He's with you. Keep working on it, give it time. And maybe your relationship with Jesus has hit some choppy water lately. Don't worry, you won't tip over. Even if you give up on him, he'll never give up on you. Maybe your relationship with Jesus has grown and grown and grown into one that's deep and strong and trusting and it blesses you and the people around you. And if that's the case, then give thanks. Give thanks and keep working on it. Relationships take time, even our relationship with Jesus. But thanks to Easter, we have all eternity with Jesus to figure it out. Amen. Our song of the day is Cornerstone. We invite you to sing along. Trust the sweetest friend. 
Let us stand as we proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe believe in God, God, the Father Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of of heaven and earth. earth. I believe believe in in Jesus Jesus Christ, Christ, God's God's only Son, Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit, born of the Virgin Virgin Mary, Mary, suffered under under Pontius Pontius Pilate, Pilate, was was crucified, crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love triumphs over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of the good news. Your church cries out, O God, and you listen. As you drew near to the disciples, draw near to us this day. Breathe on us, your Holy Spirit, that our faith is renewed and we witness to your love. Open our hearts to discern where we are each being called to serve and prepare us to do so. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Your creation cries out, O God, and you listen. Guide farmers, gardeners, arborists, and others who tend the soil and nurture plants into life. Help humanity to be faithful stewards and to tend to your creation lovingly and thoughtfully. Lord, in your mercy. Your world cries out, O God, and you listen. Hear your people crying out for justice, for an end to oppression and subjugation, Lead us towards a world where all people of all nations can express and experience the dignity of their inherent value as your beloved children. Lead us towards a world where all are fed and all are safe so that no one may need to live in fear. We pray that you accompany and watch over those serving in the armed forces and their families, especially Kayla Bilhars, Mackenzie Bilhars, Tanner Evans, Kaylee Fox, Hannah Fox, Kim Hall, Daniel Jacobs, Cameron Kakak, Drew Rattler, Robson Shankland, Tyler Brockney, and Ben Hauser. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Your children cry out, O God, and you listen. We pray for all who cry out in suffering or in pain, in body, mind, or in spirit. Give them comfort, relief, and healing. Lord, we pray especially for Scott Aspholm, Don Knowlton, Noah Mulholland, Skip Ward, Linda Gerken, Gladys Kellogg, Lorna Scrimshaw, Vince Hegel, Axel Heller, Deb Watkins, Stan Maiman, Mark, Mary Jean Zilm, Dick Harrington, and Maggie Schultz. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Accept our gratitude, O God, for the lives of those who now rest in you. Grant us your peace amid our grief, worries, and fears. We pray especially today for the family of Imani Sandy upon her passing. We open our hands and our hearts, everything that we are holding on to, and we pray at this time for all those whom we have promised to pray. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. We all say, 
Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with our offering and our children's offering. Every year, what the kids put in the globe, um, they get to decide where it goes and uh, through ELCA Good Gifts to help people in need all over the world. If you'd like to give online, you can go to stjohncharlescity.org and click on Digital Simply Giving. Our, we, we continue with the Wartburg Collar, the College Hammer Striker.
invite you to stand for the offering response. If you're communing with us today in the pews or at home, I invite you to take out the bread and hold on to it as we begin the words of institution. We remember how in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. This is the body of Christ given for you, and you can go ahead and eat. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. This is the blood of Christ shed for you, and you can go ahead and drink. And we pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art, art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Everybody is invited and welcome to come forward to receive Holy Communion. Those who aren't communing today are welcome to come forward to receive a blessing. We have both wine and grape juice. The grape juice is white and in the center of the tray of cups. We also have gluten-free wafers available. Just tell your server that you'd like gluten-free. Uh, everybody is invited to come. Jesus is the host. We are his guests, the food of God for the people of God. Come, for all is ready and you may be seated.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. And may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. I invite you to stand for our sending hymn number 380, Hallelujah, Jesus Lives. Share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.